Eastern Pacific has probably another tropical storm to its name now on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 7th. So here we are right now with 9E designated as a depression by the National Hurricane Center. We believe it's gone a little bit further now and is probably a tropical storm that will likely get confirmed later on tonight or in the morning local time over there in the Eastern Pacific. It would be the 42nd storm of the year to date. On day 68 of the Atlantic hurricane season, we have a 20% area marked near the Cape Verde Islands that will be forming um, in that area soon, still for a future system right now. Um, on day 68 of hurricane season and in the Eastern Pacific, of course, 9E and two areas of interest that we're still monitoring a 40% in the Central Pacific and behind it a 20%. Confidence down slightly on the moderate chance there, uh, partly due to decreasing confidence due to the other system. And in the Western Pacific, we've still got that 40% chance in the South China Sea, um, likely to become a very large monsoonal type system. And we're just not sure about whether it will manage to uh, close off a circulation in the time it has before striking China. And we're still marking an area of interest that's just about on land there. I think that's in Odisha in India on the eastern coast in the Bay of Bengal. Um, and that has a very low chance of forming and is really just there to uh, keep up the numbers right now. I'm sure it will be removed by tomorrow night. Let's check some latest satellite imagery. This is what the Atlantic looks like right now. Um, you can see here a general inactivity. There's not much happening or getting stirred up, very little signs of rotation, dry out in the open waters, little bits of convection blowing around. In the eastern Pacific you can see quite clearly the uh, tropical cyclone is developing uh, off the coast of Mexico. Out to sea, lots and lots of dry air still king over there um, and any of those systems that we're seeing in the central Pacific will form from that intertropical convergence zone down there. And here's a close-up view right now of 9E, which the National Hurricane Center designated earlier today. Unfortunately, no ASCAP pass on this one today. We know that yesterday it was getting its house in order, but uh, it looks pretty convincing as at least a tropical depression. Uh, western side looking a little bit bereft of any uh, real activity, but convection blowing up. I imagine that there is a uh, closed low-level circulation underneath that. I can't see it myself, but it wouldn't be a surprise and the way it's uh, blown up a little bit more in the last few hours suggests that it is probably a weak tropical storm. This system expected to get to mid, maybe high range tropical storm status on the latest forecasts. Western Pacific, you can see there that disturbance still pushing on in the South China Sea and a few other subtropical latitude disturbances there that are rotating around and this is what happens this time of year, you get huge areas, expansive water there with multiple systems trying to become something, although we're on good authority that nothing pictured there is going to form apart from the South China Sea potentially. Out in the Indian Ocean, monsoonal pattern really, um, lots of rainfall though expected for central India towards the western coast of India over the next few days to total very high amounts of rain pushing maybe 750 millimeters and in the southern hemisphere towards Australia New Zealand things looking very quiet a little bit of convection blowing up to the east of uh, Samoa but apart from that it is generally looking very quiet check those sea surface temperatures right now and you can see that this uh, newly developing storm is just about on the edge of 30 degrees Celsius waters Further out to sea, the temperatures aren't looking quite as favourable, still pushing 28 degrees though if those systems form at low latitudes. The Atlantic, ahead of that area of interest, looking fairly good, 26 to 28. It'll struggle in its uh, first days, uh, but it will get a little bit better for it later on. Gulf of Mexico piping hot there uh, for any future systems. 
So, Indian Ocean, warm in the Bay of Bengal, off the coast of India, where that disturbance is, 30 degrees, 31 maybe. In the uh, South China Sea, where that 40% chance is, very good temperatures, 30 degrees, one or two areas, maybe even pushing 32 there. Gulf of Tonkin, particularly warm, and the coast of China between uh, uh, Hainan and Hong Kong. And well up the coast there along the eastern coast of China and for the southern islands of Japan now. Very warm waters, 28 degrees or higher. Got a bit of a bad feeling about the western Pacific that we might get a few really strong storms this year. Look at the anomalies in the subtropical latitudes, the high elevations of the screen. And you can see this way above average in some of those areas that could be key for significant storms affecting urban populations later this year. In the tropical zones, not quite as stark, but it is slightly above average, generally. Oceanic heat content really getting quite established now in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, sorry, the Caribbean and that uh, eddy in the Gulf of Mexico. Eastern Pacific still struggling, but getting just a little bit better. And the Western Pacific, of course, delivering as you would expect to vast areas across the whole ocean there. So then let's check the computer models and this is what we're looking for in the Atlantic over the next few days. Where is it? There is that system just developing near the Cape Verde Islands and it gets going properly around the 9th of August. That's two days away and off it goes towards the west northwest getting close to hurricane status looking at those colours. Once again you see that little bit of energy start to come in there and there it goes. It's off and it starts to develop and quite uh, significant in size there as well when you can compare it to the uh, Cape Verde Island chain there. Significant. Eastern Pacific you can see that system 9E becoming a hurricane there quite clearly on the GFS model so that's bigging that one up as well although GFS has been a little bit fluctuating and those two other systems that look like further towards the west first of all the one furthest west which is the one that has had the most model support that's still looking pretty decent 40% chance but the other one is just sort of getting in the way a little bit and that's why we've got a 20% chance on that I'm pretty confident that at least one of those systems will form in the western pacific the disturbance will eventually get swallowed up into a massive low pressure system and there it is becoming a tropical storm briefly before making landfall in southern china the briefness of it is why we're a little bit worried about whether it will form 40 percent chance some people might suggest is a little bit low but once you see there it takes a while to wrap around those tropical storm force winds just a little bit uncertain that such a large system will be able to wrap itself together properly but i think it will eventually do so Looking at the precipitation though, regardless of formation on this system, you can see that very large amounts of precipitation are possible, particularly along the western coast of Luzon in the Philippines. Now hopefully those very high amounts will remain out to sea, but still you can see a few red areas over land which would correspond to about 10 inches of rain, uh, 250 millimeters, and you can see similar amounts in isolation along the southern Chinese coast. And then now into the longer range, this is the Atlantic and you can see this system continues towards the west-northwest generally and starts to die off as it approaches the, uh, latitude, uh, the longitude of the Lesser Antilles. A little bit further north is what we were seeing on yesterday's forecast, but that's what the GFS has planned at this point. Very uncertain when we get towards the longer range, this is day 5 through day 10. And of course, uh, it's much weaker as it gets further on towards that area. Eastern Pacific, you're following 9E there, moving on towards the west, dying off as it slowly approaches the Hawaiian Islands. What's behind it? Anything? Well, yes, towards the end of the 10-day period, a tropical storm tries its luck along the Baja California Peninsula there. Interesting formation point to the west of... Uh, Western Mexico, if that makes sense, to the south of the southern tip of the peninsula. And there it is, making landfall and then moving up the coast as a weak tropical storm. Fascinating. And this is what could be our Central Pacific storm. I won't mention its name. Uh, there it is, moving towards the northwest, shrinking in size there, and then hopping towards the north and then re-strengthening and getting itself going again as it approaches and crosses the international date line. So that would end up becoming a typhoon uh, if this forecast is correct towards the 10-day period. 
that of course being the 16th and 17th of August feels like a long way away Western Pacific then behind that monsoonal system uh, there could be rumblings of another one and there it is there looking a little bit more uh, tropical as a matter of fact but still also doesn't have very much time to develop either these kind of systems are difficult to predict long range very uncertain circumstances I wouldn't put much faith into this one but the first one has quite a little bit more confidence well that's all the serious stuff done at this point let me take the opportunity to show you the Force 13 merch store you can scan the barcode there which will take you straight there we offer animations on individual storms and full seasons on request and we still have the still waiting for Hone t-shirt although I think it may be an endangered species round about now and let's check the silly range looking at the Atlantic Basin you can see what's left of that uh, tropical storm but what happens next it regenerates out there in the North Atlantic and there it is again looking pretty decent and round there small though and then uh, stalls for a little bit and moves off towards the northeast reminds me a little bit of I think it was Beryl in was it 2018 um, if that's the one uh, the right one I'm thinking of uh, which regenerated as a subtropical entity that one looks fully tropical though but of course long range all right what happens to Hone there it is it's growing in size strengthening becoming a significant typhoon possibly even a major and then it really blooms in size as it approaches Japan and another typhoon forming there moving through the uh, Ryukyu Islands towards the end of that 16 day period and then you will have two big typhoon systems there on either side of the Japanese islands that would be a sight to see although somehow I quite doubt that just yet well then what happened on this day on August 7th 2009 Felicia was a category 4 but the main show was Morocot which was making landfall I think it was in Taiwan on this day or very close to it uh, Morocot even though it was only a category 1 I always remember that it was a very severe impacting storm I think it was to do with flooding I'm only going off my own memory here uh, I believe it did cause quite a few fatalities and was regarded as a particularly bad storm and got retired. So Morocot being the main feature on this day. Well how about on today's day, 7th of August 2022, Danielle is the next name in the Atlantic, Howard in the Eastern Pacific might be about to um, appear in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Mulan, and in the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citrang. 42 storms have formed so far this year, although it has been a below average first half to 2022. Next name in the Australian region is Darien, Southwest Indian Ocean starts at Ashley, and in the South Pacific, we'll be looking out for Harley. That's all for now. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.